I was watching a Cody's lab video where he's trying to levitate a piece of graphite using a big rare earth magnet and a big coil of wire on it with lots of current and that inspired me to do some experiments of my own. Dan Service sent me a big stack of rare earth magnets so I thought I'd try just a few of those to see how they interact with a piece of graphite. I got a 0.7 millimeter pencil lead from a mechanical pencil and three of the magnets and if I bring that up even before it touches the pencil lead the pencil lead tends to roll away from the magnet. So the uh, graphite of the pencil lead is repelled by the magnetic field from these rare earth magnets. So the question is, can I get it to levitate this piece of graphite? And if I just put it on there, you can see it doesn't. But let's try something else. This is two stacks of magnets and one has got north facing up, the other one north facing down so that the flux just kind of wraps around from one to the other. And if I put the, uh, oh there, it just wants to get away. If I try to put it on there, it uh, tries to get away from the middle of those magnets as much as possible. So I'll use this folded piece of paper to try to position the uh, graphite right where it repelled it the most. And you can see it does actually lift up just a tiny little bit when I try to position it above there, right before it jumps off to the side. So the magnet is able to lift the graphite, but for it to levitate, it would kind of have to hover without me touching it. And with passive magnets, that unfortunately isn't possible with any material because the configuration just isn't stable. The, uh, the graphite, in this case, just wants to fall off on either side of the magnetic field. The thing about magnetic attraction or repulsion is that the object in question isn't so much attracted by the flux, but by the change in flux density. It always wants to move to greater or lesser flux density. So imagine this is my set of magnets, north, south, so it's like this. Um, so the flux, the magnetic flux outside the magnet would be kind of going like this, joining the north and south poles, and spreading out and spreading out. But the uh, flux density would be highest towards the corners, because that's where it's the shortest path to the other side in free air. And also the drop-off is the steepest towards the corners, because we have all this concentration here, and then that spreads over a much larger area. Whereas if, for instance, we had a very wide magnet, then we'd have relatively parallel flux lines coming off of here, and there would actually be a relatively small amount of attraction on this whole surface because the change in flux density is less. So I was doubling up on this effect by taking two stacks of magnets next to each other, so north here, south here, and so we have a lot of flux lines kind of connecting right between the two magnets, and of course they would be most dense right here where we've got the north and south pole closest together. And that is where I was getting the largest amount of repulsion of the graphite. And just to illustrate, here is my magnets again. I'll put a piece of paper on here and here's some dust from below my bench grinder. And you can see it's attracted most to the edges, not to the actual middle of the magnet. Now this effect is very weak compared to the attraction of iron by a magnetic field, so just this one paper clip here, just the end of it is enough to lift the heavy magnets. Whereas with this pencil lead, it just barely had enough repulsion right along the line to even lift the pencil lead itself. Now if you go watch Cody's video, you can see he was seeing most of the effect towards the edge of the magnet, as I was saying, and taking advantage of that effect, I was able to use far fewer magnets and actually lift a larger piece of graphite just by putting it on the edge. So go watch Cody's video, it's worth watching. I'll put a link in the description.